I'm making another short film. After reading all the feedback and comments on my last short film, Nowhere, and after using Blender for a couple more months, I feel like I've learned a lot as a storyteller and as a Blender user. So I'm gonna be using all that feedback with this short film. And I'll be honest, your feedback was warranted. Nowhere wasn't that great. They didn't have really much of a story. It was only one setting, just, you know, a car driving down a road. But I just wanted to make something. I wanted to get something out. And I feel like I learned a lot from that. So it was definitely worth doing. Anyways, the plan for this short film is to make a video for each shot of the short film so that I don't just disappear off YouTube for months and that you guys can come along for the journey and you can learn with me, I guess. So yeah, anyways, let's get into the first shot. I just wanna let you guys know that that intro was filmed like weeks ago. I went on a road trip. Lots of things been happening in my life. So that's why it's been a while off YouTube, but I've been working on the shots in Blender and now I wanna make some videos again. So here I am. Just so you know, this scene isn't fully finished, so I'll probably end up adding more things to it in the short film. Anyways, let's finally get into explaining what I did. So, to start off making the motel, I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to do it, but eventually I settled on just the simplest way, which was just using different shapes for each section of the motel. And I was using this photo for reference that I found off Pinterest. I think it's from Greg Gerard, the photographer. I'll leave a link down below. But anyways, using that photo, I just like kind of drew over it in Blender. And then I kind of like figured out the basic shapes from that and just using cubes and some extrusions and loops cuts made the basic shapes. So I just had an idea of where the motel is. So then I could position my camera and just, you know, start to get a sense for how the scene was going to look. And I always like modeling and adding stuff from my camera's point of view. That's just what I always do because, you know, that's how the audience is going to see it. So that's how I should be seeing it when I make the scene. I also added in some loop cuts and extruded back in the windows and added some window frames around it. Then it was on to adding all the other medium kind of details, uh, the things on the side of the motel, the poles, the railing. That was just using wireframe modifier and array modifier. And I will say again, that reference that I was using just helped so much. But honestly, I, I just find modeling easier when I don't have to come up with the shape. I'm just copying another shape. Like I've seen artists like Ian Hubert, he's really good at just spontaneously modeling and coming up with all sorts of different things. But I feel like I never do that. I, I just like copying something and looking at a picture and then trying to recreate that, I find that so much easier. Now I've got a pretty basic layout of the whole scene. So I just started going in and assigning materials to certain parts, the yellow, the green, the brick, all of that. And then I do my classic texturing technique, which is just for each uh, texture, start off with either a base color or a base texture. And then from there, layer on top grunge and just more and more image textures. So texturing the yellow and green like plaster on the walls, that wasn't anything that interesting. It was just the same image texture on top of image texture on top of image texture. And that's just time. And I'm still not happy with it, so I might end up changing it. But the thing that I had the most fun texturing was the bricks. I made the bricks just using a image texture off textures.com, of course. But then I started layering, layering in grunge and it was looking okay. But then I realized that Andrew Price had a new, or Blender Guru, had a new video out on texturing and he was texturing a brick wall in it. So I went and had a look at it. This color burn technique that he posted about, I'll put the setup right here, is really, really good. And I used that with my bricks to add in the noise in between the brick texture. So that added a little depth to it. I also added some displacement to the bricks, which definitely gives it a bump displacement and that definitely makes it look better the texturing that i'm doing for the asphalt i'm still not sure about i still don't think it looks good displacement doesn't really help much i might get photo scans if anyone has any advice leave it in the comments below if you've done realistic asphalt before i'm just not so sure how to do it without like adding millions of polygons with displacement or with photo scans. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys, when I was making this scene, I just did the same thing that I do with most of my other scenes. I used to think that artists like William Langren or Ian Hubert knew something that I didn't, and maybe there's some small shader trick or setting that they know, but in reality, it's just a lot of time and hard work. So realizing that with this scene is, why I've just spent so much time working on it and texturing it just to get it better and better. So unfortunately, there is no special button that you can press to make things look photorealistic. As I said, it's just a lot of time, but I still like making these videos because there's normally something with each scene that I learn, something new or something that I improve with that I like telling you guys about. And it's just fun. Like if you enjoy Blender, then putting lots of time into it is fun. And so I enjoy Blender and I want to teach you guys about it. So yeah, that's... That's it, I guess. 
So while I was texturing, I was playing around with different lighting just because I wanted to see the textures in the different kind of lighting environments. And currently I've settled on a HDRI as like what the camera sees. I'll put the setup on screen right now. And the sky texture is what actually is lighting the scene because I love how the sky texture makes everything look, but I don't, it just doesn't look realistic in the background and HDRI does. So I kind of settle with that because it looks pretty good. Oh, and yeah, I also made curtains following uh, this YouTube tutorial. I'll put a link down below. It's very simple, very easy. Just chuck that in the windows. I might change the texture on them a little bit and change the lighting inside the motel. But for now, it's looking fine and it gives the general idea that I want it to. So now we've gone to the point where the motel looks pretty good. So I wanted to add some more detail to the scene and just fill it out, you know? So I added that Motel 6 sign. I originally was going to have it as Motel 7 as like a little in-joke. But I might do Motel 6. I just don't want them to sue me or something. I have no idea how that works. But yeah, that, that's just another thing I added. And then I started to add this electricity pole because I wanted some more small detail. Now this pole took way too long to make but there are so many small details with it that I'm actually pretty proud of how it turned out. It's not finished completely yet, but it's looking pretty cool. Um, I just used this picture I found of an electricity pole and I kind of just went through and modeled each little tiny thing, uh, which was a good practice for my modeling, definitely. And like I said before, it was easier to copy the shapes than make it up. If I didn't have that reference, I'd be completely lost. But uh, yeah, it's looking pretty cool. The cables are kind of interesting and it just adds that small detail to the scene, which the motel doesn't have. Now, the background is something that I'm having a bit of an issue with. Since this scene isn't finished, I can't really give you guys the whole lowdown on what the background is. But currently, I have a house model of Sketchfab that is kind of a placeholder, but I also might use it. I'm not sure. Um, I was gonna have like a motel, like the check-in place, like the reception desk or whatever there. And then I realized that doesn't really make sense because I couldn't find any reference. Like there's no real motel that does that. And it's just another thing to model and texture. And I was like, nah. So I'm gonna end up doing like, I added some grass in and I'll probably add like maybe some trash bins, uh, maybe like a mailbox, just like some little things to fill the scene out and give it some character. And then for like the far, far background, I might just put some buildings or something. I'm not sure with daytime, it's a lot harder. Like now I see why um, William Langren and all the, and Ian Hubert, they, they do a lot of nighttime shots. That, like this is something I probably said, I've said before, but daytime is harder just cause your textures are out in bright light. And there's, it's like the moodiness is harder to capture, you know, like, the, I mean, the camera can see further, but I like daytime. It's like a challenge for me and I haven't really done it much before and I want it because it's part of the story. So, so yeah, that's my scene so far. I know it's not a full scene and there's no like great finished render yet, but hopefully when the short film comes out, you guys will be like, there'll be a good difference between now and then. And hopefully this guy, this encourage you guys to do some more blender and maybe you learned something as well. I've started working on the other shots because this one was getting a little just tiring looking at the same thing over and over. But yeah, I want to keep doing more videos uh, in preparation for this short film. And yeah, hopefully you guys liked this video and enjoyed the style. And uh, yeah, make sure to like and subscribe. Check out my add-on Trashed, which I'll definitely be using for this short film. And uh, keep going with Blender. You got this.